Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for the, for the fun introduction and a great segue, actually, um, to what we're doing. You know, I actually had the pasta, uh, which was delicious, although the portion was very small. Great for drone delivery. Fun fact about pasta, uh, nobody ever orders it by, by, by road-based delivery, I should say. It's our fourth most popular product that we fly, specifically noodles, um, but also all sorts of pasta. And I'll start from the top, if, if I may. Uh, 13 years ago, Jeff Bezos announced drone delivery. I didn't actually believe it. I thought he was joking. Um, and eight years after that, I founded this business. The, the drone delivery industry has been guilty of not delivering uh, for a long time. And largely, for no good reason, not for tech reasons, certainly, mostly because the whole industry has been held back by regulations not being ready, not getting in the way, just not being ready. So. Um, I always use, sometimes I just present the onion and I don't explain what the onion is for and I won't explain the onion uh, until the end of the presentation but there's a reason there's a picture of an onion here. Um, I'm a tech guy, software, this is my sixth business that I founded. The rest of them were all super boring businesses but they did okay. Um, how does it work? First of all, there's 5.2 billion food deliveries a year from the top four aggregators. So Uber, Uber Eats, um, Just Eat, Delivery Hero, DoorDash being the largest. DoorDash alone do 2.5 billion deliveries a year, road-based deliveries a year, growing at about 15%. So this is an industry that's enormous, that, that's growing, that suffers from rotten unit economics. To, to hire a person, a human being, um, or as now called the humanoids, um, to drive a three-ton vehicle on the road, and the road is a 2D space that's congested, and to try and make that viable delivering a hamburger and fries or a cup of coffee or something like that, it's just economically really, really difficult to work. And so we've solved this with flying robots. We're live, we've been delivering um, for quite some time, actually over three years in Ireland and now in Texas. So it's real, you can, you can come to Dublin, open our app and order coffee, hamburgers and fries, you name it, you can, you can order it. Books, hardware store, prescription medicine, uh, just about everything. And here's an example uh, delivery of um, chicken chow mein for three people. That drone is bigger than my dad. It's, it's actually not, but it's 1.8 meters motor to motor. It carries three and a half kilos or eight pounds and about the size of a basket of convenience store goods. We do one of those deliveries every 60 seconds in Dublin on the weekends. We operate seven days a week, 13 hours a day, and it is busy as hell. We have capacity for about 1,000 deliveries a day in one Dublin suburb. This thing works and works really well. And when I compare it to, for example, three... Three drone-based deliveries versus three road-based deliveries. I won't be unfair to the car because I only have five minutes left. The three drone-based deliveries uh, were finished in about four minutes. One of our drones today does eight deliveries per hour. We could fit four of our aircrafts on this stage. One aircraft doing between eight and nine deliveries per hour means on this stage I could power about 30 to 40 deliveries per hour with our current system. A typical McDonald's drive through does a little bit over that. So we're already at a pace where with three or four car parking spaces, 
we can power a McDonald's drive through if we wanted to. So the productivity, the throughput of the aircraft, of, of what we're doing, is already at an, an ability to replace, fully replace road-based delivery in suburbs. And that's our mission. Our mission is to remove every single road-based delivery. In the town, in just, in just two weeks, in Dublin 15, um, we do, we've done about 170,000, or, or removed the equivalent of about 170,000 road-based kilometres. So driving through suburbs, through busy streets where kids are playing, uh, lots of traffic, and we've removed that every week. So the CO2, or the environmental view, is fantastic. Um, here's two days of deliveries to 500 unique houses in a suburb of Dublin that we did last year. And I show this to give you an example of the adoption rate or the popularity of the service. The red lines are the equivalent row-based journeys. I should say every one of these deliveries is profitable and, well, real. That's two days and delivered about 6% of the households over that weekend. In, the, in, the, in Dublin 15, where there's a population of about 145,000 people, in 43,000 homes, we reached 38% of those households. There isn't a house we cannot deliver to. And by the end of this year, we'll be serving about 1.2 million people in the Dublin, the greater Dublin suburb area. And we'll be doing a run rate of about 2 million deliveries annually. So it works, it's, it's popular as hell. Once people go to drone delivery, they never use road-based delivery again. We can fly in rain, we can fly in snow, we can fly in, in heat and cold. So we're as available as the car, except the robots don't look for tips, they don't have COVID, they don't knock things down. Um, an important slide is, it's one thing about having a fun business to build or an exciting business for consumers to use, but we've always looked at it from a financial viability point of view, so unit economics. We've seen what happens when VC-backed businesses don't focus on unit economics. This is our cost per delivery over the last two years. Um, you can see on the left, just two years ago, we were, it was costing us about $70 per delivery. Today, this month, we will reach about three euros fully loaded cost per delivery all in. That is a fraction of the price it costs DoorDash, Just Eat, Delivery Hero, you name them, to actually operate a row-based delivery. But the difference is our NPS today for the, and for the last three years is in the high 80s, early 90s. Customers absolutely love the service and the reason they do is our average flight time is three minutes. If you order a cup of coffee from us and 30% of our orders are for hot coffee, cappuccinos, you name it, um, what world does coffee delivery work? Well, only when you can fly as the crow flies at about 85 kilometers per hour. And finally, the onion. Um, I love this story because uh, obviously I'm the founder. I always look at all the orders as they come in um, and I find them all interesting in different ways. About a year and a half ago, we got an order for a single onion in, in Balbriggan in North County, Dublin. And it was one onion, five euros delivery charge, 39 cents, the onion. Even though the drone can carry, you know, two bags of onions more. So I called the guy, I wanted to know what was going on here because I'm interested. And, you know, he didn't answer the phone the first couple of times. I texted him, I said, it's okay, it's safe. And I spoke to him, he'd already done about 60 deliveries. And I said, why did you order just one onion? And he said, because he's environmentally conscious, he didn't want to waste onions. He had a steak on. He needed an onion, just one onion. And I think that points to the behavioral change that a three-minute delivery can bring. People get exactly what they want, exactly when they need it on their terms. And this guy was used to the service, so it seemed completely normal to order an aircraft autonomously flying to his house to drop an onion in his back garden. Thank you very much.